Hello, and you're very welcome to the fourth Change by Degrees Climate Club events. My name is Kieran O'Carroll, Director of Development here at Change by Degrees, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Last week, world leaders met in Davos for the World Economic Forum. At the launch event, there was a, a very startling statistic shared. 40% of global CEOs think their organization will no longer be economically viable in 10 years' time if it continues on its current course. A, a very uh, startling statistic. I think you agree of CEOs admitting that themselves. Uh, but those same le leaders went on to say that they are struggling to transform their organizations to make the necessary changes necessary. It, it's clear that a new form of leadership is required to decarbonize our economies, achieve sustainability goals, and run successful companies. In short, now is the time for high impact sustainability leadership. And I'm delighted to say that joining me to dive into these topics over the next 30 minutes are two fantastic sustainability experts. Dr. Tara Shine is co-CEO at Change by Degrees. Tara has advised world leaders, governments, and civil society organizations on climate change, environmental policy, and development assistance. Tara was formerly a climate negotiator at the UN and special advisor to the Mary Robinson Foundation, climate justice and advisor to the elders. Welcome, Tara. Good morning, Kiron. Hi, everyone. Good morning. And also joining us will be Vice Admiral Mark Mellett, DSM. Admiral Mark Mellett served for 48 years in the Irish Defence Forces. He is the first naval officer in the history of the Irish uh, states to be appointed the Defence Forces Chief of Staff, having previously served as Deputy Chief of Defence and Chief of Navy. Admiral Meld is well-established champion of sustainability, promoting collaboration, diversity, gender equality, and mental health awareness. Just before we get started, I'd like to invite our viewers to submit any questions in the chat function or email info at change by degrees. So Tara, I might start with you. Um, let's set the scene here, a little bit of background, a little bit of context. What is high impact sustainability and why is it needed so badly right now? Thanks, Kiran. Yeah, so for me, high impact sustainability leadership is about transformation. Um, it's about systems change. It is not about tweaking the edges. That's the big, big difference. So a lot of organizations, governments and businesses are engaged in this process of I can just do a little bit of this or I'll, I'll change a little bit around my emissions, um, but that's not enough. High impact transformation across a business is saying, business as usual is heading us down a certain route where we're destroying nature, we're putting the climate in danger, so we have to find a fundamentally different way of doing things that looks as much as our bottom line as it does as our impact on society and our impact on the environment. And getting that balance right, you can't only think about environment and your emissions, for example. You have to pay equal attention to uh, the rights and well-being of people in, in your supply chain and your employees. Um, so we need it now or we're not going to have a livable, uh, a livable future. Um, and what strikes me, you know, picking up on your point here on about Davos, is it's not just young people like mm. Greta Thunberg that are frustrated and exasperated at this stage with our inability to show this transformational leadership. It's also old men. So when I watch people like the Secretary General of the UN and Al Gore, who was at Davos, I see that they are running out of words to express how urgent this is, how hypercritical it is for humanity to take a different route. So when Al Gore was speaking at Davos last week, he was like, we are not winning. This is a quote. The crisis is mm -hmm. getting worse faster than we are deploying the solutions. And what's important there is we have the solutions, we have the money, we have the resources, but we're not deploying it in the right direction. And to get all of that going in a different direction, we need high impact sustainability leaders. And those leaders, I think some key attributes are they're brave, they're innovative, mm -hmm. They know how to collaborate and connect the dots between different elements of what their of their business or organization or their government and their effective communicators. So bravery, innovation, collaboration and communication, I think, are four key things we should be looking for um, in high impact sustainability leaders. Fantastic. And I see uh, Mark has, has joined us. How are you doing, Mark? You coming through? I'm very okay? sorry about that. some technical hiccups there, but uh, I'm with you now at last. Um, Listen, it's great to join yourself and Tara and uh, delighted to be in the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. terrific to have you, Mark. So uh, Tara just brought us through what high impact sustainability leadership is, why it's needed now. 
Uh, so I want to ask you as well to, to help kind of build this idea of the core competencies and values that are under uh, high impact sustainability leadership. Well, what what are the values and competencies that, in your experience, is important for a high impact sustainability leader to have, to possess, to exhibit? Yeah, and I, I make the point as a, an inextricable link between values and culture. And I actually go back to culture. Culture is the critical component that's going to actually underpin high value uh, sustainability leadership and and culture is about you know the collaboration the the mindset around diversity and inclusion it's the mindset around innovation and it's also about values such as courage to actually be able to make those decisions and to be able to set out the platform that you intend to follow and you know it's very easy to be dismissive in terms of the actual requirement to be sustainable today and saying you know everybody else is not doing it or some country is not doing it Really, it starts with the individual himself and herself, and and that's where that courageous leadership and being able to inform yourself. It's 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 not from a position of ignorance that you can give leadership. You really need to lift the the manners. And I was reading Tara's piece in the Currency recently, and there's great great material in that. I don't Tara, if you can actually put that up in line, and maybe it is up in line because I think you you set out very well at the kind of um, intergovernmental level. You know what's in and what's out, but it comes back then to the business community, to civil society community, and to government. And we as individuals need to inform ourselves and implicate ourselves in that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so trying to give our audience a sense of like the pra practical on the ground realities of, of sustainability leadership, would you both be able to share a couple of practical examples of that, what that looks like in your experience? Mark, going with you first, an example of your time, perhaps in your career in the defense forces, maybe when, when you've had to demonstrate this leadership style and, and what impacts did it have? Yeah, I, I suppose in my, my latter years in the defense forces, um, the way we all approached the COVID pandemic was an example of the type of approach we need in the context of sustainability. That, that was clearly not a single actor um, requirement. That was actually a collaborative approach right across government involved in society, involved in the market enterprise, everybody actually uh, acting in accordance with the requirements to deal with that challenge. And I remember calling myself in terms of some of the initiatives, the initial uh, requirements, setting up a joint interagency task force. And, you know, the, the clue is in the name. Bringing something together to coordinate this, this has all the different stakeholders there. And from the point of view of the military, it was not just the military, obviously it was HSE were really leading on this with Paul Reid, working closely with Paul Reid and other leaders. So that type of model is the same that we require in terms of um, approaching sustainability challenges. Okay, fantastic. And, and, and same question to you, Tara. Um, an example from your career in sustainability of of when you you had to demonstrate this kind of leadership style? Yeah, so I think it is a lot of this leadership is around is around bravery and it's about sticking to your values and principles. I learned a lot about that luckily in uh, working alongside Mary Robinson and seeing her for years stand up for the the principles and stand up always to put justice justice first. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of change by degrees in the last few years, an example would be having always to practice what we preach. So sometimes there are organizations that, that come to us and, and want to work with us, and they might be very exciting organizations that would be able to pay us very well. But when in talking to them, you get the sense that they're not really into the transformational change. They really are just looking to tweak around the edges um, to, to do small things, to get a better line to take. Perhaps you might then actually inadvertently be helping this, this company just to greenwash and make itself look good, mm. whereas you know that it's not making the transformational change. It's not actually driving down its emissions. It's not actually improving its governance and improving its social impact. And so in those cases, you have to say no, and you have to walk away from the work, which as a small organization, a small business like Change by Degrees is, is always a tough thing to do. But uh, I think when Madeline and I have taken those decisions, we've never regretted it. Yes. Um, but it it is it's that ability to live by your principles and to to be brave and courageous sometimes in you know in sight of tough financial decisions saying no this this is not going to this is not going to help the world and it's not going to help our organization and fundamentally it's not going to help this client because they're not really trying to do the right thing absolutely i think many people in our audience will 
uh, feel a connection with you know tweaking around the edges on, on sustainability and you know with regard and not delivering that kind of wholesale transformation uh, we need I, I might try and link that back up with with you mark and in your experience tweaking around the edges you know versus the kind of full-scale transformation that may be required to solve a problem you know how, how can a leader uh, yeah. deliver the transformation rather than the tweak well, I, I think that's the um, the tweak is a characteristic of business as usual, and and that's the culture piece that business as usual not will not cut it. We really need to actually um, change that mindset. And somebody once said that that um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And actually, it doesn't. It consumes everything in its path. And I think the requirements here, in terms of the culture shift, are exactly those leadership, courageous leadership from individuals, but also in terms of government. I, I, I certainly look at government in, at present in terms of the climate action plan, the targets it has with offshore renewable energy. We're not going to get there in terms of business as usual. This real, really needs a transformative mindset across government co collaboration, whereby there is actually impl implicated departments and leaders, implicated industry in terms of their own uh, commitment, and likewise realists from the civil society uh, and ENGO community. The, you know, perfection is the enemy of the good. And, and I would love to have perfection in everything we do, but we don't have the time for perfection in terms of the decisions that are required, the strategies that need to be implemented. And we're on, even if you look at our targets for 2030 in terms of ORE, seven gigawatts, two gigawatts of green hydrogen, that's really, really dramatic and very, very challenging to achieve. And, and we need to actually do everything possible to get there. And let's be good at it. But that's and have an iterative process and not looking back in terms of just um, business as usual. Absolutely. And I, I think it's it's fair to say, right, for, for people that do kind of step a couple of extra steps ahead of other people or stick their head up out of the power pit first, it, it can take a little bit of courage, right? Or maybe even a great deal of bit of courage to to demonstrate sustainability uh, leadership. And, you know, having conversations that, you know, we can't just do what we did before. We, 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 need, we need to change it, change it up in, in ways that, that uh, you know, can disrupt. So what advice from your experience or your knowledge uh, for the audience might you have about people who might be at their organizations and they're thinking, geez, you know, I, I'd love to drive a sustainability strategy forward. I'd love to implement transformative uh, change. But, you know, it, let's call a spade a spade. And like it, it can be a little bit daunting. Uh, what what advice might you have for them as someone you know who I think has experience in in that area of having to put yourself you know uh, above above the fray above the power pit you know. I, I think the critical piece is communications. I think there has to be an empathy uh, in terms of the constituencies. And, you know, it's very hard to polarise in this debate, and that's not going to be helpful. We are where we are in terms of elements in this, whether it be the, you know, the transport sector or whether it be the airline sector or, or whether it be the hydrocarbon sector or even the farming community. But, you know, where we need to go to uh, requires a pathway that is co-created. And um, that that piece of, of um, I suppose, co-creation, not about, you know, uh, grandstanding and, you know, uh, I suppose, criticizing. It's about uh, recognizing what is at stake, the window that we have available. The, the trend is there, you know, we are at 1.2 degrees, probably even beyond that. So yeah. the Paris 1.5 degrees is really, really going to be challenging, if not, I, I suppose, to be honest, if not impossible. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Terry, to come to you, I want to touch, come back to you both on communication, but I think Mark just there touched on co-creation, and I know for you and for, for us at Change by Degrees, co-creation is a key part of what we do. Why is co-creation linked to high-impact sustainability leadership, and how does how would one go, what's a practical example, maybe, perhaps, of demonstrating co-creation as a process actually, like, working or happening? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think, you know, that's it's the way in which we as sustainability experts work with our, our clients. So we're never going to come in and do the job for you and hand you a strategy or a report and say, there you go. Uh, it, it, it's only by co-creating as, you know, us working with our clients or as leaders with an in an organization with their employees that you're going to actually have ownership of the transformation that you want to make and therefore people involved. And I think, 
key to that co-creation is is the culture change obviously that that we need to bring about and at the heart of culture is yeah it's things like clarity around roles and responsibilities but it's also how you communicate and for me a big barrier to why we haven't made progress on sustainability on climate on protecting biodiversity is because we've got the communications completely wrong and I say that as someone who has been part of getting it wrong for over mm. 25 years we have thought for too long that facts would persuade people facts don't persuade people and um, we thought we would shock them into action with doom and gloom scenarios that didn't work either none of these things work we actually have to engage with people as human beings we have to figure out what it is that they care about. We have to create emotional connections between people, between different levels in an organization um, in, order to in order to move the dial. Someone asked one of the questions, how do you overcome resistance to change? You need to have different conversations. So just telling people this is important is not gonna change anything. A top-down strategy that says we're going for net zero when nobody knows even what that means is not going to change anything. Mm. A whole lot of data, dashboards, is not going to change anything. What's going to change things is when we work with people in a different way and when we have um, effective leaders within organizations at all levels. That doesn't just mean at the top. There are leaders at all levels within an organization and they're all empowered with the right knowledge, with the right motivation to help drive the structural change, knowing what part of a big plan they are collectively part of and driving that forward. So to overcome resistance to the person who asked that, we need to start the conversation differently and possibly we need to start that conversation with a broad base of people within an organization because they are interested in this. People are interested but some people are more interested in the social side of things than they are in the save the planet side of things. Or maybe they're more interested in, you know, fairness in the economy. Whatever it is, we need to help them find their way into this conversation and make it for a broader base of people. Terrific. And, and Mark, to, to throw that as kind of similar theme over over to you, uh, you, you have experience of getting people to collaborate and maybe come from different positions, different backgrounds with, with different aims. How have you successfully managed to get those people kind of around the table in a team pushing for the, the same goal? What maybe practical advice would you be able to give our audience who find themselves perhaps having to do similar things? Well, the first thing I'd say is you're not always successful and actually um, be prepared for failure. And, and, and I think I, if I think back in my own career, often uh, the pieces failed on the, on the communication side just because you rationalize something in your own mind and you communicate that doesn't mean it's going to translate in the same picture into the mind of those you communicate to. So that that loop of actually ensuring that you're on the same page with those you're actually trying to bring along, whether it be a change in direction with regards to a new approach to the way you do business. Um, and, and it comes back into the culture piece. You know, when you're actually moving culture, be aware that there will be huge resistance in the context of that culture shift. There are there are constituencies who have a vested interest in the constituent or the, the culture remaining unchanged. There are individuals who have power because of the current make of the culture setup. And and so tying with that is really going to put you in in the spotlight. And that's where the courageous leadership comes. But the piece that I actually I think is your lifeline in all of this is communications. Communications, ground truth in all along the way. That's what you're articulating and what you're trying to achieve is being understood and that that's mm. the old adage of communicate 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 that's the way that uh, you do it but be prepared for failure and and failure is not a bad thing you know mm. uh, like our lessons come out of failures and that's where you get that issue of peace so you know I, I often think you know failure is where knowledge comes from because you attempt something it doesn't work you try again on the basis of your lessons you identified and the lessons you learned and that gives you a better shot of actually achieving the next time round so don't be afraid of failure you know it's it's um, it's it's actually the way uh, progress is made Fantastic. Um, I will. I will. I am no longer uh, afraid of failure, and I will. I will be telling my bosses right after this webinar. They'll be delighted <laughs> to hear. Um, if Tara, if our members of our audience are sat there and they they're like, "Great, I want to become a high impact sustainability leader," but like, how do I know that I'm actually becoming one, or I'm taking those those first steps? Um, how do I know the, the kind of path to go down and to upskill myself? What advice 
would you give them? So first thing I would say is don't try and go and transform your organization all on your own. Uh, that's going to be really hard. Um, it's really hard to stand up for any kind of change alone. So if we look back through history, whether it's women's rights or the civil rights movement, people got courage to be brave by having other people who said, I'm with you, right? You're going to do a hard thing, but I'm with you. So find some brave people who, who care about the issues that you care about and you are up for bringing up and making these hard conversations so that you don't have to go it alone. Um, and ask for help. It is the most amazingly powerful thing when you ask for help. So when you ask for help, people will will give it, you know, and more than you possibly ever thought possible. Um, and then I think upskill and get ready. So prepare. Don't jump into this without having done your homework. So make sure that you found out the key things you need to know. So if you, if you need to build some skills and learn some knowledge, then that that is a thing to do. You know, and if anybody's interested in how they learn more, they want to learn more and engage with us on that, then get in touch with us and change by degrees. And then I think a key thing is we keep talking about sustainability as theory and in the abstract, whether that's around climate or biodiversity uh, or human rights, all of these things, we tend to talk about them in theory. So we need to stop talking about distant targets and net zero commitments and, you know, high, lofty, lofty goals and targets that, that don't really resonate with people and start to show people what the actions are that we're talking about. Um, and what we mean, because then you're like, oh, you want me to get involved in that, that I can do. And whether that is a project around trying to get more employees uh, walking at lunchtime because it's good for their well-being or engaged in creating a biodiversity garden with you or something really significant around switching the trying to create the economic case to switch the fleet from diesel vans to electric um, you know, starting to be able to show the practical elements of this so that we get out of the theory and into the practice, I think helps a lot more people to come on board because they're like, oh, yeah, actually, like, I'm, I'm interested in that. Yeah, I'll, I'll come and help you with that. And um, so, you know, people are practical in the end of the day. And if you can show people that you take a step and it changes something, they're more likely to come back and say, right, let's do something else. Fantastic. Yeah. Mark, similar kind of question for you. Ta Tara mentioned there, you know, leaders and, and, and uh, getting, pe getting people to buy into your vision. Leaders need a few followers, right? So how, how do leaders kind of nurture uh, those followers to, to go with them on, on the journey? How, how can you get people on board with your vision from your, your experience and, and maybe get them to go places that uh, they might not think they, they would go <laughs> if it wasn't? Well, I, I think it's, it, yeah, it's creating the understanding that you're not out of sync. Um, and I, I speak about diversity, uh, and we generally look at DNI in terms of a mirror up to our organization. But I also talk about diversity in terms of the network you have and bringing your, let's say, C suite or your key leadership team to meet others who are actually uh, approaching the challenges that are there and, and learning from them and having a mutuality. That's a real powerful way of actually having those frank discussions. So look around in your network at those who are actually you know, uh, blazing a trail. And and the other point is don't wait for the une inevitable. You know, there's, there's it's like that letter you have to write and you keep on putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then one day you sit down, you write and what a relief it is. Actually, climate change and the requirements to actually have a sustainability strategy, to be prepared for the impending legislation that goes with that, to look at the price of carbon that is inevitably going to rise. All of these are, are, are trains coming into the station be ahead of the curve and actually have that kind of common approach and, and that understanding that this is actually makes sense. So it's um, it's it's that piece of actually um, recognizing you're not on your own in the context of the organization or the group you're, you're bringing along with you. And there are some very good, um, I think, uh, service providers and and think tanks and I think Change by Degrees is a good example of a, a company that actually provides that that support at, at a very soft level or right up to a very deep dive in terms of strategy. And I leave Tara, I'm sure you're probably a better salesperson at this than I am. <laughs> Uh, terrific, terrific, Mark. It's very kind. It's very kind of you. We're we're almost at at the half hour mark. So uh, how we usually like to end these webinars is uh, a take home message from each of our experts uh, to the audience. So um, I'll go to you first, uh, Tara. If you had a, a kind of key sentence or two for our audience to really remember, take home from this this webinar piece of advice on high impact sustainability leadership, what would it be? 
Yeah, so I'm going to give the key piece of advice and just a couple of things I saw in the chat first. Someone wanted me to recap on what are the four key attributes, I think, of transformative leadership. So bravery, innovation, because we have to change things, collaboration and effective communication. Um, and then someone else asked about, does this have to come from within? Yes. And asked about the inner development goals. We have to start within you. Yes. So Christiana Figueres has a great quote, which is systemic change is a deeply personal endeavor. If you get out of bed tomorrow and you do something and you lead differently, that will be a key lever in systemic change. So all of that is so important. And then for me, it is the take home message. is It's not easy to be a leader on this stuff. Um, so you're going to have to find yourself some allies. You're going to have to build your skills. And then if you share what you learn as you go, we can all move faster together. So make your failures, share your lessons. Don't be precious about it. If something really works, share it because that's how we're going to move things forward faster. Collaboration, sharing. If you uncover be best practice or something that works, get it out there, let other people know, because we all need to move really fast and effectively as possible. Uh, Mark, uh, same, same, same for you. What's your take yeah, on message I, for the audience? I, I suppose I, I go back nearly over 400 years ago and John Donne, the, the uh, writer who uh, wrote, I think, in For Whom the Bells Told, no man is an island entire to himself mm -hmm. each is a piece of the continent a part of the main if a clod be washed away europe is the less his message is about collaboration and about interdependency civil society and the civil society institutions are about working together and having that common vision so we really need to look at the collaborative uh, platforms that we can actually hook up with and how we actually within our own organization create that sense of of a common effort in terms of uh, facing the existential travel tra uh, difficulty that we're facing here in terms of climate change. And my apologies for being late coming on. I'm, I'm, my daughter did my inner emergency, so I'm not up no. uh, babysitting no. my granddaughter. And I was getting Peppa Pig sorted out before here, and then the, the web wouldn't work. But Peppa Mark, Pig is working, and, I think and my Peppa, web is Peppa Pig, I think we can all agree, is an absolute priority. Uh, so so thank, thank you so much. And like my, I guess my take home message is, um, from us to change by degrees. If you're in a leadership role, you found this webinar helpful and you, you want to keep going and really get embed those sustainability leadership skills further, you may be interested in finding out more about our one day intensive sustainability leadership course led by Tara and Mark. So if you just want to have a chat about that, find out about more, uh, just say so in the chat or email us at info at change by degrees. We'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, so that just leaves me to say thank you very much to Tara and Mark for their excellent insights. We'll be sharing a recording of this webcast. You can watch it back or maybe you think a colleague would like to hear from it or, or anyone, share it around. Uh, that's, that's what we're here for. Um, if you have any ideas about topics you'd like us to talk about next, we want to hear from you. These webinars are for you. Put it in the chat. Uh, email us at, again at info at changebydegrees.com. We'd love to hear your ideas and suggestions because we want to tackle the topics that are most relevant. Uh, to you, some upcoming topics we have in our radar, engaging your employees on sustainability issues, upskilling, training, and also what's coming up in terms of EU sustainability uh, regulation. I'm sure you may have heard of CSRD, EU due diligence, SFRD. What does it all mean? Uh, that's in the pipeline uh, as well. And um, thank you very much. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for attending. Look out for the video email arriving in your inbox. And as I say, if you're interested in learning more, developing your leadership skills more, uh, do get in touch about our uh, one-day course. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. And bye. see you next time.